welcome to worship today. A special welcome to guests we have with us today. We're happy we can worship God together. And I wish you a happy new year. This is the first Sunday in a new church year. This is the first Sunday in Advent as we await the coming of the Lord and as we celebrate his coming among us even now. Today we also have a healing blessing and we invite everyone to come forward for a healing blessing later in the service. Please note the Wednesday worship opportunity during Advent and beginning this Wednesday, December 2nd at 7 o'clock. Also, the opportunities to serve are in your bulletin, including the winter clothing drive that is going on now through December 12th. Also, the opportunity to deliver those clothing items on December 12th and to sign up in the fellowship hall to do that. Please note the ecumenical giving tree. Thank you for all who have already helped with that. And please note that you can take an ornament from the giving tree, go shopping, and return the gift to the giving tree by December 14th. This Saturday is the uh, Scandinavian holiday bake sale and tea. And so there is a lot of help that's needed coming leading up to this Saturday. Please note in your bulletin, everyone's invited to participate. There are forms out in the narthex on the table that look like this. And there's a box there you can put that into if there are, th are ways that you would like to help. Please indicate that on the form and place it in the box on the table. Remember in prayer today, those listed in your bulletin. Uh, we also remember today the 3rd Battalion, 5th Marine group and families. They are fighting in Afghanistan and lost 12 from their battalion in four days. Today we have a special intergenerational event in the Fellowship Hall at 945 and so we hope you'll be a part of that during the coffee hour following the service today. As we enter into worship now on the light and the cross enter the sanctuary, I invite you to stand and center your hearts in God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, the Lord of Israel who comes to set us free, the mighty Savior who comes to show mercy, the dawn from on high who guides us into peace. Amen. Let us come before God in confession. To you, O God, we lift up our souls. Sisters and brothers, come with joy and draw water from the well of salvation. Remember the gift of baptism. Your sin is washed away in the name of Jesus. You belong to Christ. You are anointed to serve. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. Stand up and raise your heads. The reign of God is near. Amen. Just a word of instruction, please note that following the greeting, we will go to the song, Wait for the Lord, on page three. Lois will play it through one time before we sing it, and then we will sing it once, and then we will sing it each time after the verse from Psalm 25 that you see printed there on page three. So we will repeat it all together five times, okay? From the one who is and who was and who is to come, from Jesus Christ, the first fruits of the resurrection, grace and peace be with you all. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. You lead the lowly in justice. 
Your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. Come and deliver us. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, alert us to the threatening dangers of our sin and redeem us for your life of justice. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We invite the children to come forward at this time. Good to see you this morning. And today is the first Sunday in Advent, and Minister Kim is going to be giving you one of these calendars today. Okay, this is an Advent calendar, and there's something for each day in the season of Advent. And Advent goes for all the days now until Christmas, okay? So we want you to take one of these today and be thinking about how it is that God is coming even now into our lives, okay? And today we're especially thinking about the word love. And Kevin Larson is here today. Kevin is the father of Abby, who's right over here, and she has the light. But Kevin's going to share a story for us or a word for us about love, okay? Sure. Kevin? Good morning. It's good to be with you this morning. I actually not only have one story, but I could share seven if I wanted to. But I don't think anybody would want me up here talking that long. But it's kind of the same story that happens seven times in our life. And each and every time, my family showed me a tremendous amount of love. Until we moved here two years ago, we moved seven times in 14 years. My kids often asked, Dad, what branch of the military are you in? I said, no, 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 don't you remember? I worked for this tape and adhesives and abrasives company in St. Paul called 3M. You might have heard of it, right? But boy, we did a lot of moving around. But each and every time, my family showed me a tremendous amount of love, sacrifice for us to survive each and every move. Um, and so we are so grateful to be here in River Falls today with all of you. So Kevin is going to lead us in the lighting of the Advent candle. And as he lights the first candle, we say the prayer of Advent, Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Kevin. And then a prayer that we're all going to uh, speak and repeat. All right? And your part is this. Listen and hear. God's promises are true. So I will say, O oh God, speak to us. And then you say, Listen and hear, God's promise is true. Dear Jesus, thank you for your great love, a love that will last forever. O oh God, speak to us. Listen and hear, God's promise is true. In loving, honoring, and serving you each day, O oh God, speak to us. Listen and hear. God's promise is true. In preparing our hearts to be ready to receive you as Savior, O oh God, speak to us. Listen and hear. God's promise is true. Amen. Mr. Kim was going to give you a calendar now, okay? to your seats. The first lesson is a reading from the book of Jeremiah. 
The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is a reading from the book of 1 Thessalonians. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 21. Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations. Confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves, people will faint from fearing and foreboding of what is coming upon the world. For the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day does not catch you unexpectedly, like a trap, for it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Maybe see. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in this, our season of Advent. I thought that I knew how to prepare for having another baby. I was confident that I was prepared. When I was pregnant with our second child this year, I was going to be even more ready than I was with our first. Because after all, I had already done it once. So I certainly had more knowledge than I did the first time around, which of course I did. And then I read an article online about how to best prepare for a baby by buying things when they're on sale and using coupons before they arrive. You know, things like formula and diapers and wipes. And, and then I searched for how many diapers a baby goes through in each size. And I bought a bunch of stuff. I bought formula, the same stuff we used with our son Elijah. I bought diapers using that article as a guide. I also thought that I knew what maternity leave would be like, and I thought it would be easier. After all, I thought, well, it would be summer instead of winter, and uh, I'll be able to go outside, and everything would go smoothly because I was prepared. I knew what to do. Well, <laughs> our daughter is more sensitive than our son and couldn't eat the formula that I bought. <laughs> so 
So I had to go up to Target and exchange it. And then our almost 10 pound baby blew through the size one and two diapers. <laughs> and I had three boxes that I'd go back to Target and exchange. And then there were those first few weeks of maternity leave. And they were way more difficult than I thought they would be. And I hate to admit this, but I did not feel very bonded to her. It's changed now. <laughs> and I felt bad for her brother, and I tried to overcompensate by paying even more attention to him. And I was so tired that I had no motivation to go out for the walks that I anticipated. And then I felt guilty that I was just wasted away these summer days. And everybody would be like, oh, it's so great to be off in the summer. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and I remember going out for a walk one day and looking at the baby, and I just felt like I was not connected with her. And I just started sobbing. And we got home and pushed a stroller in the garage. And I looked at her, and she smiled at me. And while it didn't make things instantly get easier, it did make a huge difference. Now in Advent, the season of waiting and preparing and anticipating the birth of Christ, it's the time of year where we get locked into doing the same things exactly the way we've always done it. We decorate the same way, we make the same treats and meals, we go to the same events. Well sure, maybe there's a few things we do differently, but for the most part we prepare for Christmas the same way we always have based on our experiences and our traditions. And there isn't anything wrong with doing those external preparations exactly the same. But I wonder how do we change up those internal preparations, those spiritual preparations. And the season of Advent is one that should challenge us and change us and encourage us not to do the same old thing. Because when we think we are ready and prepared, that's when Jesus is going to take us by surprise. Just as, as I was taken by surprise and even discouraged at how I thought the arrival of our second child should have gone. Now Advent is more than just waiting and preparing. It's having a watchful faith every day and acting justly and seeing the kingdom of God in the world right now. Because when we do, we will see that the promise that comes with Jesus that all things will be made new. Now there's been a lot of events going on in our world this year that have challenged our thinking, have had us questioning the state of our world, have created fear within ourselves, and even divisions among friends and family as we discover we don't share common vision and ideas for all that's happening. But our world today is not that unique. I mean, it's unique to us at this moment but God's people have been in bleak situations for eons. And we hear Jeremiah speak today in the lesson that Sandy read to a people who are living in exile. And these were people who believed that God was with them. But then three major things happened. The Babylonian king destroyed three traditions that made them question if God was really with them, if God really was as powerful and faithful as they thought. First, the kingly succession God had promised to David 400 years earlier was destroyed. Second, the temple was destroyed, and this had been their place and their center of their worship life, and now it was in ruins. And third, the belief that Jerusalem could never be defeated was destroyed, because they believed that Jerusalem was invincible. So Jeremiah speaks to them, Words of promise. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. We know the promise of the Savior has happened and will happen again. And even though we, the people of God, are scattered all over the world, we're not one nation as, as they were, we still hold the promise of Christ with us. We know all things will be made new. So people of promise, we are called into action. During Advent, our preparation for this promise is to imagine the work within the kingdom of God right now, within all the events of the world right now. 
Now it seems if there's one question that plagues everything that is happening around the world, and even in the platforms of our presidential candidates, and that's whose lives matter. And while that shouldn't be a hard question for us to answer, it is when it's accompanied by fear. But what if instead of asking that question, we focus on look, looking, listening, and feeling for the kingdom of God? What if we have a watchful faith every day and in response act justly? If we really want to feel prepared to receive the promise of new life through Christ, then we open ourselves up. We listen and hear because God's promise is true. The promise that Christ's life matters and that is the toughest or the thought that drives us to be faithful and respond justly. Now hearing and listening really are two different things, but when they work in combination with each other, it is a powerful force and calls us into action. Now hearing can easily be ignored. It's easy to pretend we don't hear the crying out from those in need. It's easy to pretend that we don't hear Jesus calling us through the voice of someone that's not like us. It's easy to not hear Jesus, Jesus calling by closing ourselves off from where he might be speaking to us, like literally, so we won't hear it. But hear it. God's promise is true. Listen. True listening is harder to pretend. Listening involves action. And it's much harder to bluff our way through saying we are listening. When we listen, we acknowledge we heard. And even better, we acknowledge that we are called into that situation. And we may not always understand or know exactly what to do, but we try. We try even when we don't want to, even when we are afraid, and even when we might feel we are sacrificing something of ourselves. That's when we know we are truly preparing for the promise of God. So this season, let's break free of our usual confident preparing for the coming of Christ, stretch ourselves a little further, open ourselves up to the unexpected so that we aren't discouraged by surprised, but instead we are pleasantly surprised at where the kingdom of God here on earth has brought us. There is so much more to do than just our traditional Christmas preparation. And when we do, I know that Jesus will smile. Listen and hear God's promise is true. Amen. We confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. We worship God with our offering. Our Lord Jesus healed many as a sign of the reign of God come near and sent the disciples to continue this work of healing with prayer, the laying on of hands, and anointing. In the name of Christ, the great healer and reconciler of the world, 
we now entrust to God all who are in need of healing. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. Emmanuel, God with us, you have come, you are here, and you will come again. Come to all today who are in need, that they may receive the promise you give. Lord, in your mercy, come to the church, stand with people of faith who are persecuted, that they might know your presence. Lord, in your mercy, come to the earth, come to the nations of the world, inspire all leaders to work for justice and peace. We remember all those places around the world that are in conflict and war. We remember places in Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Sudan, and all those places in need of peace. We pray for those who serve, especially those who serve our country. The 3rd Battalion, the 5th Marines, Vincent, Tyler, Colton, Mitchell, Jack, David, Crystal, Brett, Stephanie, Brent, Nick, Stacy, Jake, Mike, Joe, Travis. Protect them. Grant them the assurance of your presence in all things. Lord, in your mercy. Come to those who are in need body, mind, or spirit. We pray for those who are sick, for Hannah, Bob, Katie, Orr, Baby V, Mary, Michaela, Gary, Dwayne, Marvin, Del, Brody, David, Don, and those we name now before you. Grant your healing grace, Lord, in your mercy. We remember all who have died and gone before us. Strengthen us in our walk as we watch and wait until that day, by your grace, we come to see you face to face. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, you came into the world as one of us and suffered as we do. As we go through the trials of life, help us to realize that you are with us at all times and in all things, that your loving grace enfolds us for eternity. With your cleansing love, bring healing and strength among us today. Amen. We invite forward all for a healing blessing. Please note there are four stations in the front, and you may come to any of the stations up in the front as you come forward. The ushers will direct you forward as they typically would for communion. Children are welcome to participate. Please note there are prayer team members also to pray with you if you'd like that following the healing blessing. Come. Let us pray. Living God, through the laying of hands and anointing, grant comfort and suffering to all who are in need of healing. When they are afraid, give them courage. When afflicted, give them patience. When dejected, give them hope. And when alone, assure them of the support of your holy people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Almighty God, who is a strong tower to all, to whom all things in heaven and earth bow and obey, Be now and evermore your sure defense 
and help you to know the name given to us for health and salvation is the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. We share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. Peace be with you. Pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.